Buongiorno, today we're going to make a dessert which is uh, pretty popular in Italy and around the world. I had recently a request on my website about a dessert called tiramisu. And um, today we're going to make it not only for the special person that requested for all of you that you can also make this wonderful dessert at home. Some people might refer to it as a cake. I really don't like to call it a cake. It's not a baked cake. It involves uh, ingredients that are partially cooked, some of them. For example, the Savoyardi, which uh, in America they are referred to as uh, the ladyfingers cookies. They're really basically a cookie. It involves eggs, which we gonna go to another point. The eggs are gonna be raw, being that this is not a cooked cake. So we really wanna make sure that we have the freshest eggs that we can um, find around. The use by date, according to me, actually, means absolutely nothing. It's like saying, you know, use these eggs by the 15, what happens on the 16? Uh, nothing, absolutely nothing happens. Eggs don't really go bad that quick. They have very long life. Matter of fact, uh, growing up, we never, we didn't even have it in the refrigerator, but we had our own chickens and we would eat our e eggs within a couple of days. Now, people have eggs sometimes for a couple of weeks in there and you don't know how long they were in the supermarket. A way you can simply figure it out if eggs are fresh. You fill a container with regular tap water, cold tap water. You lay the egg all the way into the water, you let it go. If the egg goes down to the bottom and lays totally flat, your egg is super fresh. If it start tilting on one side, it's already a week old. If the egg immediately floats to the top, you know the egg could be could be a month old. Is it bad? No. Do you want to make tiramisu with it? No. You can fry it. It's still good for that. Let's go to the rest of the ingredient. Well, a very important factor of making tiramisu is of course the espresso, the coffee you're going to use. Some people might think that it's fine to substitute the espresso with the, you know, the regular brewed coffee. That I do not advise that because the coffee itself, it's not as concentrated. The flavors are not there. So I do prefer to to brew my own coffee with an espresso machine. There are ingredients and tools that you're going to need. Of course, back then they didn't have all these gadgets, they did everything by hand. But today we're going to use, we're going to use our old uh, beater and um, mixer. We have, of course, um, there, there have been different uh, versions and we're going to do a little bit more of the modern version. Fresh eggs, like we said. Mascarpone comes in containers, small containers. This is the container that is 500 grams. 500 grams is exactly what I use to make two pans, two medium pans of tiramisu. So 500 grams of uh, mascarpone. Of course, make sure it's fresh. Five eggs. This is not a super sweet dessert. The, the mascarpone is like a cream cheese, so it, it does have a natural little sweet tendency in there. So I have 120 grams of sugar and plus about a spoon or a tablespoon or two into the coffee. The coffee that we brewed before, we have the espresso with a two tablespoons of sugar. We have some chocolate powder, some cocoa powder that we're going to sprinkle within layers. And also I made some chocolate curls and just for decoration actually, you don't have to. Some um, good quality white chocolate. 
and our Savoyardi lady fingers. So here's a quick rundown here. The, these chocolate shavings are really for decoration. So we're going to set aside. What we're going to do right now, we're going to flavor the coffee with a little bit of sugar and whatever little bit of liquor that we decide. We are going to divide the eggs. The yolks go in here with the sugar and the whites go in there. We're going to foam everything up, mount it, and like, like the white will get in a uh, meringue consistency while um, the, the yolks with the sugar will be more like a zabayone. At that point we're going to add the cheese, fold it into the zabayone, we're going to marry the whites in there, fold everything slowly at that point, and then we go to assemble the actual dessert. First thing I want to do, this is the coffee that we brewed before. Now, um, how much espresso? Well, it really doesn't matter. You, you want to make enough that you have enough room to dip your lady fingers. If you have a little bit left over, drink it or put it in your tomato plants. We are going to put, in my case, I'm going to put some Baileys in there. And that's, that's all I need. You could add a couple drops of uh, vanilla extract. Always use real vanilla, don't use imitation. I am going to place it back in the refrigerator while we prepare the rest of the ingredients. I'm going to go ahead now and separate my eggs. We're going to... Some people like to crack the egg on the edge of uh, bowls and things. I don't, I don't like that. I just like to crack it on a flat surface also because if you go on the edge, you could actually push some fragments of the shell into the egg and crack the yolk. So, I go ahead and uh, separate my, my egg like this. As you can see, I was pretty successful on that one. Okay, at this point, the whites are ready to go. Make sure that we lock it. And there you have. We want to go pretty high on this because we want to get a nice, fluffy, light consistency. In the yolks here, I'm going to put my sugar. And I'm going to wash those out. We're going to check the white. The way we do that is we want to see that there is no sliding around, that there is no liquid left. So I'm going to just check it out. And you can see that actually it is very fluffy but pretty solid. You will see there is no sliding around, there is no liquid left. It's pretty solid and fluffy at the same time. And that is good on that one. I'm going to scrape some of the, the yolk that is not mixed yet from the sides. And I'm going to go ahead and fit it a little more. At this point, I'm going to add my mascarpone. As you can see, it's a very creamy cheese, but super, super smooth. I'm going to go ahead now and mix the cheese into the zabayone. 
we don't want to go super power now. We just really want to mix it on this low. You want to make sure the cream is well blended. It is a good idea once in a while to stop and scrape the parts that are flying around. As you can see, it's already getting a nice custardy uh, look. Once this step is done, this is what marks the end of the power tools here. Now I'm going to go and incorporate the whites. You can see the nice... We don't want to whip this, we just want to fold them. Folding means just like you were going to fold a napkin. It's basically a culinary term for doing exactly what I'm doing right now. You don't want to add this all at once because you don't want to lose the, the consistency of this cream. You want to make sure that everything is incorporated a little at a time, slowly. And fold away. And fold. Tiramisu really means pick me up. Pick me up, the story is, um, of course, there are several parts of Italy they claim to have the original recipe. The one that is more credible, it's um, accredited to Treviso in the, so in the north of Italy. Um, it was created by somebody in a closed house uh, after the clients need a little pick-me-up, a little energy boosting, and um, the tiramisu was created to give you that extra boost. Now we're going to go into the assembling of the actual dessert, the fun part. Actually, it's even funner to eat it, but... <laughs> I'm going to retrieve my espresso. I want to make sure when, when you put your espresso in the fridge, you don't have any raw onion or any leftover something that could overpower the coffee, because coffee, it's a little bit spongy in a way. It will absorb some uh, flavors. I'm going to use a container, I like to use a con an empty container to open all my lady fingers. We are ready now to layer. We are going to start with some of this wonderful cream and coat the bottom. Now remember that you're dealing with raw eggs here, so it's not something that you want to take all day to do, or stop in the middle of it and go do something else. This is start to finish, you do it, you assemble, and you refrigerate immediately. It's something that is intended to be eaten same day, the day after. And so it's if you're having people over, you make a bigger, larger amount. Or you could simply cut this old recipe in half, and you make a smaller version of that. We now take our soyardi. Now, this part, it's a little bit tricky because if you leave them in the espresso too long, they will get super soggy. But remember that they're going to sit into the cream for a few hours or overnight so they're going to absorb more liquid. So you don't want to over drench them here. So I just like one to three out and let some of the excess drip out. And I'm going to layer them. I've seen, I've seen people like put all bunch in there and then try to fish them out one at a time and you end up with uh, one big espresso cookie soup. I see the, my pan, it's 
there will not be enough room at the end to put a full one. So maybe what I suggest is that we go like this and then we'll get a little creative in the middle. I've seen people take shortcuts. Uh, in my years in the kitchens, I've seen people instead of use sauerdi, they take a big, like a sponge cake or angel food cake or something and, and do it that way. Not advisable. Let's do it this way. At this point, we're going to put another layer of cream on top. Now, you can make it extra creamy or less, depending on really how you like that. I say just a thin layer in between, and we complete the first layer. Usually two layers is what we're looking for. We'll make sure everything is coated. At this point, we put the second layer. Now, remember on the first layer, we put our sauerdi this way. I'm gonna go this way on this one, or depending on the first layer, you do the second one the opposite. You know, feel free to do whatever you have to do to make everything fit. And the little pieces that you cut off, I'll show you they will not go to waste. And we're gonna go and add the last layer of cream. Now we could be a little more generous on top. Leave a little peaks and a little design here and there. We'll put a little extra here. At this point, I do like to decorate with my chocolates. Uh, another thing I've done is if if I'm around a certain holiday or something I like to maybe be creative and get some some uh, maple leaves or that I will lay down, sprinkle my chocolate and then I will remove the leaves and you have a nice uh, look in there. Or another thing that you could do is you layer a, a fork and a spoon we go ahead then how much chocolate well do you like chocolate you decide and that's one quick decoration I also like to add some of my chocolate curls. Not too many. And remember, you can always serve some on the side if people want it to. Just to give it a little extra color, I'm going to maybe do a little shave of the white chocolate. As you can see, this is how I made the dark chocolate, simply a potato peeler, vegetable peeler, and this is your tiramisu. And there you have it, today we made a traditional tiramisu, a wonderful sweet treat to have after dinner, and if you'd like to know more, about all my traditional dishes, you know what to do. Subscribe. Well, now, another thing you can do if you don't want to make one of these big, or if you have, in this case, a little bit of the cream left and all these little bits and pieces that you had to work with, you can make some individual portions. You really basically do the same thing we did before. You start, these little pieces were already dipped as you saw before, so we're gonna 
just use those right there at the bottom. I'm gonna put on the cream. This will look a little more like a parfait. You can have a couple of those in there for the person that pops in and expect it. A little like that. A nice cream on top. A little dose. It's your individual tiramisu. Va bene.